HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk, to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we take you inside the Hopkinton Middle School Lip Dub, Keep Smiling for Abby hosted a day at the Derby. The Hillers softball team was on the road for Game 1 of the Baker Bowl as they took on the defending state champions, the Bellingham Blackhawks, and Courtney We'll let you know everything coming up on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. But first, the town election results are in, and here is what happened. The 2015 town election has been completed. In the contested races, Gene Birchman and John Graziano took the two available seats on the school committee. Birchman will serve her third term and Graziano his second. The Parks and Recreation Commission race was close. Laura Hansen beat out Bob McGuire by just 29 votes, 785 to 756, to take the Parks and Recreation unexpired term to 2017. All six questions passed. Question one, a new $14.1 million Department of Public Works facility passed. 1,049 to 675 against. Question two, roof repairs to Hopkins and the high school for a little over a million dollars passed. 1,198 to 550. Question three, the purchase of 135 Hayden Row for $1.8 million. The property was the choice of the elementary school building committee for the new school. It passed 1,124 to 584. Question four passed 939 to 757. This allows the town to purchase 147 Hayden Row for about $1.5 million. This was the second choice for a new school by the ESBC. Question five passed 920 to 757, allowing the town to purchase 15 Claflin Avenue at a price of approximately $310,000 for cemetery use. Question six passed, allowing the town to purchase 102 Fruit Street for about $2.5 million. This 32 plus acre parcel will be used for recreational purposes and water supply needs. Those elected in the uncontested races include, as for the selectmen, Todd Sestari and Brian Herr, the Board of Assessors, John Duffy, Board of Health for three years, Paul Winchman. Board of Health on expired term of 2016, Philip Cohen. Board of Library Trustees, Darlene Hayes. Cemetery Commissioners for three years, Thomas Pratt. Commissioners of the Trust Fund for three years, Sandra Altamura. Parks and Recreation Commission for three years, Daniel Terry and Robert Dabinsky. Planning Board for five years, Frank DiArso and Pat Mahone and the Planning Board unexpired term to 2018, Frank Sevo. For more about the town election, be sure to check our website, hcam.tv. On the day of the Kentucky Derby, many folks from around the area dressed in their flashiest attire as the Keep Smiling for Abby Foundation hosted a day at the Derby at the Warren Center in Ashland. The foundation is in honor of Abby Benford, a Hopkinton native who passed away at the age of 15 after an anaphylactic reaction. A great turnout was on hand, and the event to help fight anaphylaxis was a success. The Keep Smiling for Abby Fund hosted a day at the Derby. On the day of the Kentucky Derby, the event featured Derby Squares, raffles, a silent auction, and more. The event raised around $30,000 in the fight against anaphylaxis. Stephen Benford, father of Abby Benford, who passed away from an anaphylactic reaction at the age of 15, announced 
that $25,021 will be a gift commitment to the Weiss Institute to fund Project Abbey, a project to develop an anaphylaxis auto detection and therapeutic device. The concept marinated a little bit for a few months. Ben then introduced us to some researchers at the Wies Institute. They're here today. We're right over there. I think they're still standing there. Um, the Wies Institute met with us three times in the last six months. They, they listened to our case, they listened to our story, and, and they, they brainstormed with us on how we could solve this problem with technology. It's really an inspiring group of people. If you go and talk to them, you sit across the table. These are really smart people. That, that know how to solve problems. And when they look across the table and they can solve a problem like this, they get really into it. The best news of all is they've listened to us and, and they've started a project. Two weeks ago, they started a project to create, this is a mouthful, an anaphylaxis auto detection and therapeutic device. This is a real project at a real lab in Boston and these are the guys that are gonna do it. <laughs> I alluded to the numbers earlier, but they're, they're, they're staggering. 15 million people are at risk of anaphylaxis. Two kids in every classroom, one in 20 Americans are at risk of anaphylaxis. Medicine, bee stings, food, latex, nothing like this exists. These guys are going to solve this problem. Today, Keep Smiling for Abby is, is very excited to announce a gift commitment of $25,021 to the Wies Institute to fund this project. <laughs> Uh, this, this time of year is pretty special for me because six years ago to this day I walked into the Wies Institute and I said, where is it? There was nothing there. There was a bunch of money in the bank and there was empty lab benches and my boss said, well, you got to build this out. So I said, and she said, and this is one of your first projects which was a technology that we developed for infant apnea which has many similar characteristics to what we're doing here early detection and a therapeutic intervention. And as I'm looking across these empty lab benches, the panic sets in, and I said, oh, I gotta get some help. So one of the first calls I made was to John Osborne uh, to, to join our team, and he said no. Um, <laughs> but I was dating at the time, and I was used to hearing no a lot, so <laughs> I just kept at it, and a year and a half later, he said yes and we've been a pretty dynamic team. We lead the medical group, which is one of six groups at the Wies Institute. You can check out the website, wies.harvard.edu. One of the special things about the Wies is it's not just a bunch of propeller heads at Harvard or MIT or another academic institution, and please don't take offense if you've gone to any of those academic institutions, <laughs> but it's, it's a translational institute. It's a collaborative institute. You misspoke with one little word when you're up there that said we were going to solve this. No, we are going to tackle this issue. That's what the collaborative nature of the, the Wies Institute is all about. So we collaborate with over 10 institutions, including Children's Hospital. We're going to tackle this problem together. Platform, it's a bit of a mouthful. Basically, we build devices that sense changes in the body. Uh, we can build algorithms that sense something bad that's going to happen and then intervene to prevent that from happening. Uh, traditional medicine has often been reactive, so how do, we, how do we fix something that's occurred or how do we heal people after the fact? Ideally, we should be preventing those things from happening, and, and that's what our goal is. So we are going to be launching Project Abby. Our first step will be to work with Children's Hospital to monitor patients who are admitted to the hospital presenting with symptoms uh, like anaphylaxis or with anaphylaxis, and we can monitor them and use that as, as developing knowledge towards building our device. Our end goal will be a, a wearable device, something if you could envision like a, uh, maybe a, something you wear on your belt or a, a chest strap or maybe a, uh, some kind of uh, wristband or sensors on or inside your body, something that's continuously monitoring your body. And when it senses the onset, the early onset of anaphylaxis, we could then auto-inject a dose of epinephrine to save lives. For more about Keep Smiling for Abby, be sure to check out keepsmilingforabby.org. That's smiling with an N at the end and the number four. For Hiller's softball, it was Baker Bowl 2015, round one of two. HCAM was on the road for high school softball as Dennis Baker Sr.'s defending state champion Bellingham Blackhawks welcomed in coach Dennis Baker Jr.'s Hopkinton Hillers. The game featured a great pitching matchup 
a Hiller's home run, and had just about everything you could ask for. On Friday, May 8th, head coach Dennis Baker Jr.'s Hopkinton Hiller's softball team headed to Bellingham to take on Dennis Baker Sr.'s Bellingham Blackhawks. Both teams 10-1 and one heading into this matchup with a chance to take control of the TVL bottom of the first. We bring in the Juliet Hume strikeout counter. Light up and the pitch, a swinging strike, and there's K number one. Hume set to deal, swinging strike, and that is K number two, out number three. Top of the second, the Hiller struck first. And this is hit on the ground up the middle, and it is gloved by the second baseman, played on in time, one run scores, and a second run is not going to be in time. Bottom of the second, more Julian Hume K's. Jenna Bogan reached on an error. There's a strike. And that is out number one. Hume deals. There's strike three. Nasty. Hume strikes out the side. Top of the third, Kayla Sullivan at the plate. Man on, two outs. Line up and the pitch. Hit in the air, towards right field, towards the fence, and that is gone! A two-run home run! Kayla Sullivan does it again, her fifth of the season. Three-nothing Hillers. Hopkinton up three to nothing in the bottom of the fourth. Here are some more Juliet Hume strikeouts. Hume to the set. There's strike three. Gets the side. Strike three. Hume set to deal. Strike three. She strikes out the side for the second time today. Bottom of the fifth. Bellingham plates a run. Down low. Gets by the catcher. And a throw to Hume. And the run scores. Things got a little bit dicey in the bottom of the seventh. Hume deals. On the ground, up the middle, played at second, throw to first, and they get one. A run does score. These two teams always play great games against each other. Hit in the air to shallow short. Will Zell makes the catch, and the Hopkinton Hillers have won. They beat the Bellingham Blackhawks 3-2. to two. The Hopkinton Hillers hold on for the huge win. Hume struck out 12. Kayla Sullivan hit her fifth dinger of the year, and coach Dennis Baker Jr. was able to breathe again. Coach, a tough game last Friday, uh, and you always dread playing your father and the Bellingham Blackhawks, but you guys came away with, with a uh, nerve-wracking victory. Can you talk about the Bellingham game? Like usual, it was uh, a one-run game that came down to the very end, and you're right, I, I dread that day. Um, partly because of, of who the coach is, but mostly because they're such a good team. Every year they're one of the best programs in the state, and we know that they're not going to beat themselves. You're going to have to go over to Bellingham or play them over here and actually win the game on your own. They're not going to make mistakes and make it easy for you. Um, so it's a high-pressure environment. It's pretty stressful, but our girls played tremendous. They played so gutsy over there the other day because when things start happening, it's a short field. I mean, a pop-up could could leave the ballpark and change the game. They also have a lot of fans over there that get a little boisterous and not rowdy, but they you know, show the support for the Blackhawks, which is a little unusual in the sport. You don't usually have a lot of fans at a lot of these games. So it's a tough atmosphere, and our girls played tremendous under a lot of pressure this year over there. So I was really proud of them. Yeah, it was really nerve wracking, but I knew I had my defense behind me and my catcher was really good at calming me down. So I had confidence. Um, we're definitely looking to stay undefeated in the league, and I honestly think we can do it. A couple other sports notes. The Hillers girls tennis team recently won their 15th straight match. They have not lost yet this season. Also, a couple new coaches for the Hillers. Taking over the reins of the girls varsity basketball team is longtime JV boys coach and teacher Mike Greco. And taking over for girls varsity soccer next season is former St. Lawrence University standout and high school teacher Renee Hillbrunner. For all you need to know about Hiller's sports, head to the sports section of our website, hcam.tv. 
We are going to take a short time out on HCAM News. Coming up next, we will show you what the Hopkinton Middle School Lip Dub is all about. And Courtney will have our HCAM Insider to let you know what's coming up on the HCAM channels. A lot more ahead. Don't touch that dial. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello, I am Marie Smith, and I am the chairperson of the Hopkinton Women's Club Community Register and Telephone Directory. We hope you have found our little book to be a helpful resource in the past. We are beginning work on the 2016 edition, and we need your help. Every household in Hopkinton receives one of these for free, and we want to make sure you are included. Our residential listings are based on the information we get from Verizon. If you have switched to a different provider, such as Comcast, we may not have your number. If you do not have a landline, we definitely won't have your number. Or maybe you prefer your cell number in our directory. So please take a minute and help us make the directory accurate and useful for everybody. Take a look at the Hopkinton phone book that you have and make any corrections in it. Or if you are new to town, please send us an email before June 30th. We would love to hear from you. Thank you. Welcome back to HCAM News. Recently, Hopkinton Middle School got the chance to shake it off in the 2015 Lip Dub. It took a lot of preparation and work, but students had a great time creating a school-wide music video of one of the most popular songs today. Hopkinton Middle School students shook it off for their 2015 Lip Dub. It was the second Lip Dub by Hopkinton Middle School. The Lip Dub was a coordinated effort by staff and students and a lot of work went in to prepare. I sang the wrong line by accident, but you know, <laughs> I shaked it, shook it off. So. My favorite part was like being with my friends and getting to do something that doesn't happen very often. Okay, well. um, I loved how psyched up everyone was, it was so rowdy and crazy, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> I got tired, but I just kept on thinking about what the outcome was going to be. Yeah, same. Um, you know, it honestly wasn't even that bad because every time we did it, it was a ton of fun. And the, um, the final product is going to be, like, amazing. Um, hard, so yeah, I'm excited. Can you, like, see the whole thing all Can you give us a preview of the dances you were doing in the uh, Lip Dub video? Um, there was a lot there was of this. Yeah, there was a lot of this. And at the end, there was a lot of this. And there was a lot of, shaking, and, the end, and there was a lot of, like... Pointing to the crowd. There, um, yeah, there was a ton of arm movements from me, some facial expressions yeah. that Definitely. probably weren't the best choice. But, um, <laughs> it looks great, so. It does, it does. Hey, hey, hey. Just think while you've been getting down and out about the liars and the dirty, dirty cheats of the world, you could have been getting down to this. If someone says something mean to you, you don't let it get to you, you just gotta yeah. shake it off. You can't be like the haters, you gotta be like yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, when I hear the song, I just think of like how much I love myself and the person that I am. 
And at middle school, a lot of times it's hard for people to like remember who they are. But um, that song like like symbolizes how um, how important it is to just like be true to yourself and just love the person you are because everyone is beautiful and special and unique. And yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Been working on it for a couple of months. Um, the first thing we had to do was we had to uh, find out who wanted to be Lip Dub singers and then we chose names from a hat and that's how we chose them. We had about 160 kids that wanted to be one of the singers and what we did is uh, we took them all and we chose the names from a hat and the kids that were chosen were awesome. The other kids would have been awesome too. It's, it's, uh, and then uh, we had couple of weeks of rehearsal. We were actually coming back at maybe 3 o'clock, 4.30 when the school quieted down and the Lip Dub singers were running through their takes, getting the transitions when to come in, working out the little dances that they wanted to do. It was a lot of fun though. Yeah. So how many rehearsals did you have to do to uh, finally get it down and be confident that you'd be ready for the shoot? I would say it was about five before we got confident. We did, I think, we did. We were doing groups, and then we did two as a whole, as everybody together. And it wasn't until that last one where we really had it down. How did you end up choosing the song? Was it just um, was it the students' choice, or was it uh, just because you know the song has such a positive message it was chosen? Um, I met actually early in the year with some of the Lip Dub singers, and we started planning it out early. Uh, we called it the Lip Dub Club. And we started talking about making plans and how we, we were going to line the hallways, what songs we were going to use. And um, that Taylor Swift song was really popular. Some of the kids suggested it. And you know, the old shake it off, um, it's a good message, especially at this age. So um, that's why we went with it. A few weeks after the filming, it was time for the premiere. And students enjoyed it to say the least. After the lip dub was all done with, students got to see a surprise bonus track featuring the middle school staff. You know, one of the things about middle school is I always say that um, so many kids learn the hard way about relationships, about friendships, and these types of, uh, of, of events like this Lip Dub, this is when you can bring everybody together and, and just spread that message that says, hey, you know what, we're all in this together. Um, let's not forget this. These kids have a long journey together. and. Um, you know, sometimes they have a tendency to kind of get on each other's nerves, yeah. <laughs> um, and this year was no exception, but um, in the end, we came together, and um, you know, it's about shaking it off and moving forward. Be sure to check out our YouTube page and website to find the full 2015 Hopkinton Middle School Lip Dub. With graduation season and summer upon us, there is a wide array of programs coming up on the HCAM channels. Here is our promotions coordinator, Courtney, to tell you more with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Hopkinton Coffee Break on Friday, May 22nd at 8 p.m., Laura Hansen joins the hosts to discuss family, scouting, and her new position on the Parks and Recreation Commission. I really was ready, because my kids are older, you know, to get more involved um, on another level aside from scouting. This week in sports, we have the Baseball at Ashland game airing on Saturday, May 23rd at 6 p.m. on HCAM TV. On Monday, May 25th at 7 p.m., local poets, storytellers, and songwriters take the stage for open mic on Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. With a wave over his shoulder, he was gone. 
The woman watched his torn jeans and worn-in flannel walk away for just a beat longer than she should have. He is a remarkable writer, isn't he, Lauren? On Keep Smiling for Abby's A Day at the Derby, Hopkinton residents gather to support and fundraise for anaphylaxis research. On Thursday, May 28th at 8.30 p.m., musical duo Stephelia's Stone blends piano with guitar to create their original music on Studio Session Live. Oh, ask me, wait me, bring it back around, 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 cause I love, oh, oh, is like the moon. On HCAM Ed, we bring you the 2015 Pops concert with the high school bands and choruses performing some of the hits of today. For playback dates and times, visit hcam.tv slash education. Would you like to be on our HCAM Insider mailing list? If so, just send me an email at Courtney at hcam.tv. And don't forget to tune in to HCAM TV on Comcast Channel 8 or Verizon Channel 30, or to HCAM Ed on Comcast Channel 96 or Verizon Channel 31. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you very much, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Be sure to check our website, hcam.tv, or find us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton, including upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care, and happy Memorial Day weekend. Open door.